Alina. And I'm Alexandria, and we're SLAM seniors, and SLAM is a multimedia academy at San Leandro High. And this year, SLAM seniors took on a project documenting people and places in San Leandro. One documentary was on a well-known coffee shop named Zocalo's. I guess if I had to describe Zocalo concisely, uh, I would say it's a safe place. Um, the biggest accomplishment of Zocalo, uh, aside from keeping me busy most of the time, um, I think is really adding um, an understanding of what the possibilities of our neighborhood are in this area. Uh, there are a few businesses in this area in particular that really stand out as being exceptional, and I think they show to people who move here and are interested in moving here um, where we're going with this environment, where we're going with our community, and I think that we'll get there eventually. We're not there yet, uh, but we're getting there, and I think that's probably the biggest thing. I hear from both um, real estate agents and also people who have bought houses that Zocalo played a big part in their decision to stay here, so that matters a lot. Uh, in my old job, I felt like I was good at hiring, but in this job, I feel like I really don't have the touch. Um, and in the last couple of years, I've got a manager on uh, who's done most of my hiring for me, and he's been excellent at it. Um, and now, how does he identify them? I mean, he's very good at it, but I think a lot of what it, it takes is understanding when someone's really going to be invested in the space, invested in making it successful. Um, and I think that's certainly been our most successful employees have been those people who have really cared about how well the place does as a whole. Um, yeah, I really like bringing people in from higher up in the political forum so they can really experience our area. I really like bringing all the artists from the community who otherwise wouldn't be able to put their art up. And uh, we get to host a lot of the neighborhood associations, so they've got a, a public place where everyone knows they can go and actually know where it is, feel safe going there, and feel like they're on a level playing field with anyone else. So we've had visits from uh, Barbara Lee, our Congress member. We've had uh, visits from uh, people from all over the community. And, and I think really also, in terms of the community, we bring together uh, all the different people throughout there are our environment all the different communities and all the different neighborhoods here uh, and those people intermingle and so they've really grown much more about this being their sort of external living room well the morning and uh, the morning is occupied before even I get here by my two children who get up very early and who are very active um, and so they pretty much overwhelm me in the mornings and then I'm just desperate for coffee uh, and then I get here and then um, in the evenings, it's very different because uh, we close at 6. Uh, it's kind of a quiet town. Things grow up a little bit. So the, the middle of the day for me is very different than the ends of the days. Um, the middle of the day is more about this. It's going shopping from here. It's you know taking care of the place in general. Uh, and the other parts of the day are more crazy, much more crazy. The next documentary might interest people who are interested in motion capture and animation. Hi, I'm Tracy McSherry, and I'm from Phase Space, where we do optical motion capture. About 20 years ago, we developed a real-time motion capture technology, and we spent the last uh, decade developing it, improving it, and getting it out to about 300 clients, including the Army, Navy, Air Force, Boeing, NASA, Lockheed Martin, uh, Berkeley, Stanford, MIT, and about 300 other clients. What we try to do is we give about three times the performance of the older systems at about one-third the price. A lot of that is integrating the latest technology in computers and software processing so that we are able to do things with the motion capture system that other people would have to do by hand and we do it on the computer itself. That's because the markers that you see there 
are actually able to modulate their own digital ID instead of just being a reflective dot that you have to clean up by hand. The technology niche that we're in is the game companies and computer animation companies and special effects companies, which represent a very small part of the technology community. Uh, it's a very esoteric area. In that community, we're pretty well known as the technology leader, but unfortunately we actually employ less people when you use our system. So there's actually a pushback we found of having new technology. My background is a mechanical engineer from UC Berkeley and then an uh, applied physicist from UC Davis and also a Navy officer. So I'm pretty immersed in technology and when I got out I decided that I wanted to create a small company where we could uh, have some fun and do some really interesting things. Well, we have mostly engineers and scientists. Uh, everybody here has at least a undergraduate degree and most of them actually, or half of them actually have advanced degrees, a master's or a CAN a PhD. Uh, most of what we do is software programming, uh, designing electronics, and testing. We've worked on uh, Spider-Man 2012, TED, uh, upcoming robo-apocalypse that won't be out for a couple of years, and also hopefully a, um, a Russell that'll be about a koala that gets lost in New York. Well, actually, we're starting a new project, uh, Tower of the Dragon. You can see that at www.towerofthedragon.com. And we're actually looking at using these students to come in as interns and help us develop the uh, computer animation. It'll be a 3D animation. It'll be a full-length, uh, two-hour feature. And our hope is that we're actually going to get the San Leandro community involved. documentary is for people of all ages. Many people have seen the movie Brave by Pixar. Slam students got a chance to interview the makers of Brave and got an inside look of the movie making process. I'm Catherine Serafia and I'm the producer of Disney Pixar's Brave and I went to Stanley Under High School. I graduated San Leander High School in the class of 1987. Uh, I had some very good memories of San Leandro High. I can't say that I loved high school, but I loved um, my uh, activities, specific activities within high school. Uh, those including I was in the Notables and the Pirates of Pizzazz. I was in band, so all the music and theater stuff. I was in um, uh, theater productions, music productions, and at the time our stage was sort of condemned for mold and, and, and rot and had to be shut down, so we had to do all of our performances in a, in the small um, music room, uh, but we made it work. Um, so that was great, and then uh, sports were another big memory for me. I was on the volleyball track and badminton teams, and uh, I remember all of that fondly. Definitely there were teachers that made an imprint on me. Dale Chilcote was the art teacher and uh, he was very, very important in my artistic, my creative development. And um, Lee, uh, Roy Glover, who was um, in, in choir and notables, he was also a very critical, important part of, uh, of, I'd say, my high school development. And I actually saw, it was great, actually, Dale Chilcote came to uh, a party for the opening of The Incredibles. Uh, years later, and um, Mr. Glover came to the opening party my family had for Brave, so we've stayed just enough in touch through the years to celebrate these successes. Um, and I had some fantastic, also, uh, English teachers, math teachers, everything, but yeah, loved it. Um, I took a lot of steps to get where I am today, but I'd say the biggest, the biggest sort of uh, theme throughout it was just working really, really hard. I mean, none of this stuff comes easily. You have to work really hard um, to thrive in life, but in particularly in show business, it's a fairly competitive field. So uh, then, I, of course, I you know worked really hard to get really good grades so I could get into a really good college, and I went to UCLA, and then I tried to get good grades there so I could get into the master's program in film, and I tried to work hard there, and then I just did every possible internship, any any studio, any movie studio, video production, anything where they would have me as an intern, I went and I worked for free and sort of moved my way up um, and, until I finally got hired by Pixar. So I'm going to open these gates uh -huh. uh, at the stop sign down there, hang a right. Okay. Park in any stall over here. Over here? Okay. Um, <laughs> There's so many trees in this place. <laughs> 
Look at that. Look, it's the ball. It's a ball. That's what I said. She would have to take a picture of me next to the ball, please. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna Working on Brave, it was a real journey. It was, it's difficult to make these movies. We work on them a long time and we spend um, you know, a lot of creative, emotional um, and physical energy working on these. You know, you're tired all the time, you go home late, you get in here early. And you know, I, I spent six years on Brave, starting with a research trip to Scotland in 2006 and culminating in um, the opening in June of 2012. And, then, and now it's 2013 and we just had the Oscars. And so it's definitely been a long, long road, more than six years for me. We took all of these photos, you know, while we were in Scotland, and then uh, then we came home, and then we'd, we would do paintings based on the photos, or we would um, we would write scenes based on a location, and 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 use those in the film. Um, so it was like, it was really really um, very. It was a special place. The weather is really dramatic and changes. It's it changes in a moment. It's raining. It's sunny. It's windy. It's freezing. It's hot. You know, and it's, it's just ever changing and really dynamic. And that seemed like a great place to tell a story about this dynamic teenage character who's always in motion and always growing and moving and, and, and her family and that relationship as it changes. This diverse landscape was a great fit for that. As producer, I'm responsible for the ultimate delivery of the film. So I partner with the director and uh, the director is the creative oversight of making the best film possible. And I, as producer, am responsible for getting the best film possible from the director in the time allotted um, with all of the uh, components. So I hire the musicians, you know, the score uh, composer, the voice actors, and, you know, we work out casting and um, get all their voices into the film. I oversee the, the schedule and the, what we call the human, the human element of it. There's all the people, the, the 250 to 300 artists it takes to make this movie, the scientists, the technicians, the uh, creative artists, and uh, put all them together. And I try to create a the feeling of a crew and a team and a morale and keep them happy and healthy and well fed for as long as it takes to finish the film. And the Oscar goes to Brave, Mark Andrews and Brenda Chapman. We were truly surprised to win that Oscar and delighted, you know, and we've been sort of, Mark, the director, and I have been carrying it around like, hey, we got it off. Actually, I should have brought it in here. But um, it's uh, it's really cool, and, and we have, we really share it with our our crew, the, the many, many people who worked on the film. So, you know, we, we lined up here at Pixar yesterday. Anyone who wanted in the studio could have a picture with the Oscar and just, you know, to send their families, because it really is, it's a collaborative art. We can't do it alone, and... and um, we wanted everybody to, to share in the joy of the Oscar. I feel, feel great. I am going to take a little time to connect with my family because I haven't seen them lately because I've been busy with Brave. And um, then I'm going to start development on a future project, but we keep all our projects secret, so I can't tell you. Um, but, you know, these things take four or five years to make, so uh, maybe you'll see something out of me a while down the road. We hope that you've enjoyed all the documentaries on San Leandro Places. And we'd like to thank all the places that were featured in these documentaries. Thank you!